This is Front Runner, Utah's only regional rail line. Now, there is other passenger rail in the state. You have UTA's light rail track system, which consists of three lines and a streetcar. For vacation or other inner city travel, you have Amtrak's California Zephyr, which runs from San Francisco to Chicago and stops in Salt Lake City, Provo, Helper, and Green River. And there's that one tourist train in Heber. And then you have Front Runner. Front Runner consists of 16 stations from Ogden to Provo. As of 2023, Front Runner operates with a half hour frequency in peak hours, with hour frequency during non peak hours and on Saturdays. The train does not operate on Sundays. A standard Front Runner train layout consists of an MPI MPX Express locomotive in the front, followed by three Bombardier bi level passenger cars, with the southward car having a crew cabin for pushing the train southbound. The 83 mile trip from Ogden to Provo takes about 2 hours and 2 minutes. For a train that runs on Oxide I-15 most of the way, this is about 30 to 40 minutes slower without traffic. But much of the extra time is from the slow acceleration and deceleration time, and when trains have to wait at stations occasionally for the single track ahead to be open. So what does the future of this transportation system behold? Well, in the past few years, the main discussion on Frontrunner enhancements has surrounded double-tracking Frontrunner. Currently, only around 26% of the right-of-way is double-tracked. This means the peak service right now is at 30 minute intervals with hourly off-peak frequency. In the next several years, construction will upgrade the route to being 55% double tracked, allowing for a 15 minute frequency during peak hours and 30 minute frequency during off-peak hours. Alongside double tracking, there will also be the purchase of 10 new train sets to allow for 15 minute frequency, and it looks like those train sets will be similar to the current train sets. For future fleet upgrades in the long term future, there is more discussion about what trains to use. There's a good video by Christian Lenhart about arguing in favor of Stadler flirts, which will be linked below. Looking into the long-term future of Frontrunner, UTA has their own plans for the future of Frontrunner and their long-range transit plan, which comes out within the next year or so. But this video will speculate based on the following studies, which are also linked below. In particular, the 2018 LTK study goes into detail the most about future scenarios for Frontrunner based on funding. For infill stations that have been suggested on the route, they include Bluffdale, Centerville, and Sunset. But there are currently no plans for more infill stations as of right now. Regarding extensions, UTA UTA is currently looking into extending service down to Payson, passing through Springville and Spanish Fork, with a suggested future extension to Santa Quinn. UTA already owns a right-of-way that would be used for future rail service in southern Utah County. UTA is also currently purchasing land for a potential future expansion to Brigham City. In regards to expanding service, Payson would bring the highest ridership increase, whereas infill stations or an extension to Santa Quinn or Brigham City would not offer a similar projected ridership increase. Double tracking the whole system fully in the long term future would eliminate a significant amount of time. Double tracking the whole route would make Frontrunner competitive with I 15 by eliminating train meets on sightings and at stations. As I 15's future in Utah looks bleak with high maintenance costs and limited space for expansion, Frontrunner being fully double tracked and electrified would help significantly reduce the stress on I 15. Since the 2018 study, many new ideas or developments have been suggested. Several bus rapid transit and light rail transit routes have been proposed including expansions and upgrades in Utah County between Draper and Lehigh stations, while also potentially rerouting some of the existing tracks routes for better connections. For other heavy rail passenger trains that may interact with Frontrunner in the future, there is some momentum right now to potentially build another regional rail from Tula to Park City, but that would require much funding to make it a possibility. It's unlikely that such a route would be built in the near future. If you have ever traveled to cities like LA or Chicago, you are aware of Amtrak's state-sponsored routes. Currently, there is a proposed state-sponsored route from the Utah Rail Passengers Association called Link Utah. This would include two routes that run starting in Logan, then splitting off in Provo down to Cedar City and Moab, with an initial bus connection to St. George due to the city not being accessible by a railroad, though there is a study for a possible rail connection that will be linked below. For future long-distance routes, currently the FRA is doing a long-distance service study that is identifying potentially new or restored corridors and routes. Recently, the release study on identifying corridors suggested railroad connections from Portland to Barstow that goes through Boise, Salt Lake City, and Vegas. Next year, the FRA will come out with suggested routes and possibly a new route through Salt Lake City may be recommended. All three states' respective departments of transportation have all expressed interest and very recently, Idaho and Utah applied for grants to study the possibility of restoring routes on corridors previously served by the Pioneer and the Desert Wind. Other projects occurring on the route that may also affect the future of Frontrunner are possible station realignments, like in Ogden, where UTA and the city are currently looking at moving the current Frontrunner station back to the historical railroad depot. The firm in charge of the new development around the station formerly worked on Denver's Union Station. 
In Salt Lake, there has been much momentum in recent years in rerouting the railroads underground into a train box to reconnect the trains to the Rio Grande Depot. The Rio Grande plan was initially a civilian proposal, but is now being looked at as a possible solution to the east-west divide in the valley, although UTA has their own plans as of right now in regards to revitalizing Salt Lake Central. There are other stations on the route that are improving the development around their location. For example, both Vineyard and Clearfield have been making efforts to build transit-oriented development, while stations like Provo have made efforts to connect pedestrians to the station more effectively. But in summary, while not every proposed extension or expansion in Utah passenger railroads will come to fruition, hopefully this video gives some insight into what may become a possibility. If you would like to know more or get involved in the future of public transit in Utah, I have linked some great communities and transit unions as well as other Utah Transit YouTubers below. And finally, thank you for watching. Stations will include park and ride lots, bus staging areas, and a connection to tracks at the Salt Lake City Intermodal Hub. Front Runner will be capable of carrying thousands of daily riders from Brigham City to Payson. Front Runner will be completed in segments with the first scheduled phase between Weaver County and Salt Lake City to be operational in early 2008. As population increases, the Wasatch Front will need more transportation solutions. UTA relieves congestion, giving the public a variety of transportation choices. Bus, tracks, and soon the new front runner. Utah, your train is coming.